The Israeli-Palestinian conflict dominates American news coverage of international issues. Given that news coverage is Americans' main source of information on the conflict, it becomes important to examine the stories the news media are telling us and to ask the question, does the news coverage reflect the reality on the ground? Gun battles rage tonight in some of the heaviest fighting. A battle for survival for Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat. The West Bank and the Gaza Strip are under a military occupation. It's the longest military occupation in modern history. It's entering its 35th year. It's a harsh and brutal military occupation. And it's extremely violent all the time. Life is being made unlivable for the population. We have what is now of quite an oppressive regime in the occupied territories where Israelis are um, lording it over Palestinians, usurping their territory, demolishing their homes, exerting a very severe form of military rule in order to remain there. And on the other hand, Palestinians are lashing back trying to throw off the yoke of oppression of the Israelis. I spent a day traveling around Gaza with a man named Jabra Washa, who's from the Palestinian Center for Human Rights, and he described the situation as complete economic and social suffocation. There's no economy. The unemployment is over 60 percent now. Crops can't move. Um, thousands and thousands of acres of orchards and low-lying crops have been bulldozed and uprooted by the Israeli military. There are checkpoints everywhere. Palestinians can't get from one place to another. Drives that ordinarily would take 10 minutes now take four hours. All the main access and artery roads are controlled by Israel. Anything that enters and exits the, the Palestinian areas are, are, is underneath their control. And uh, so everything from getting medical help to getting education to, to, to trying to lead your daily life is at the whim of, uh, of Israel. There are hundreds of checkpoints in the West Bank. Every Palestinian has to walk through a, a single ride, two or three checkpoints. And the system of those checkpoints makes Palestinian ordinary people's life miserable. It can even reach very uh, uh, immediate forms of oppression, such as not being able to leave your homes during curfew hours as the uh, Palestinians are forced sometimes to remain in their home day after day because the Israeli army says, we don't want you out of the house on the street. It means they can't buy food, can't send their children to school, can't uh, walk across the street to their neighbors, can't get medical attention, can't do any of the basic things that you must leave your home to, to do. So that's really, uh, that's a horrible way to live your life. Since the uh, Intifada number two began, um, the, you have a much heightened uh, level of repression. Often, um, these towns or villages are surrounded by the Israeli army, and people aren't allowed to go out of their village to the next uh, to next door. It's basically a horrendous, horrendous situation. It's like living in um, a very big jail. When one lives under oppression and there is no other way out and he's being violated every day by violent means, then sometimes the only way out of that situation is through violence. Particularly if the one that is violating your rights and taking away your freedom is ruthless. 
and uses systematic methods of violence to oppress you, like torture. Amnesty International has regularly documented serious human rights violations by Israeli military forces in the occupied territories, including unlawful killings, torture and ill-treatment of prisoners, wanton destruction of homes with residents still inside, the blocking of ambulances, denial of humanitarian assistance, and the use of Palestinian civilians as human shields, and has gone so far as to label them war crimes. We don't see the suffering that the Palestinians are undergoing through occupation. We don't really understand how bad the occupation is for them. No empathy, no sympathy, no sight of women unable to reach a hospital to give birth and children and their babies dying at the checkpoint because they can't get through. If you don't see that, your heart doesn't skip a beat and say something's wrong with the occupation. That's what's become so twisted, that, um, that the dearth of reporting, the absence of images, the lack of analysis, um, the void of, um, of voices of describing the experience of Palestinians under occupation is so vast that People have no idea that the occupation is going on. CBS Evening News. Americans rely on the news media for information about events occurring around the world. News, especially television news, exerts a powerful influence on our perceptions telling us which events are important and shaping our understanding of the issues. Given the central role played by the United States in the Middle East conflict, and thus the vital role played by American voters, influencing U.S. media coverage of the conflict is crucial. Controlling the images and words used to explain the conflict has become an important extension of the struggle. Israel is really fighting a war on two fronts. The first is a military campaign being waged in the occupied territories against the Palestinian people. And the second is a PR campaign being waged here in the U.S. through the American media to ensure continued support for Israel's occupation. Alone Pincus, Council General for Israel in New York and the coordinator of Israel's PR efforts, was recently quoted as saying, we are currently in a conflict with the Palestinians and engaging in a successful PR campaign is part of winning the conflict. So you could say that in addition to the military occupation of the West Bank and Gaza, Israel is also involved in an attempt to ideologically occupy the American media.